Hey, is it possible the famous Mothman of West Virginia could be a mysterious giant eagle? Or is it still just a big mysterious unknown? I'm back on the case looking for answers to one of America's most mysterious monsters. So don't go away. Hey guys, Bill here. You know, not too long ago, I made a trip out to Point Pleasant, West Virginia to make a video about one of America's ongoing cryptological mysteries known as the Mothman. <laughs> it was here on the night of November 15th, 1966, that two young couples were on their way out to a wooded area near town to hang out with their friends and party. Just before they reached their destination, however, they came across something very unusual standing in the middle of the road. A scary man with 10-foot wings and glowing red eyes the size of baseballs. Over the next 12 months or so, there were over a hundred other signings of Mothman and lots of press to go with it. Well, what did you see? The family locked themselves inside the house, but hysteria gripped them as the creature reappeared, shuffling onto the porch and peering into the windows. No one ever reported being harmed by Mothman, but over time people began to believe that Mothman was actually a prophet of doom. You're not going to believe this. The whole bridge just collapsed. Yeah, the, the bridge has collapsed. About a week after someone reported seeing Mothman on Point Pleasant's main bridge, the whole structure collapsed into the Ohio River, killing 46 people. It's eerie what took place to cause that bridge to fall. I don't, I don't know why. Soon after, the sightings of Mothman seemed to die out, but the debate about who or what it is was just getting started. Some people hung on to the notion that Mothman was something from beyond the grave, while others considered Mothman to be related to aliens and UFOs. More practical people were convinced that people saw nothing more than a big bird. They look pretty small when they're up in the sky, but when they swoop down, you see they have this six-foot wingspan and they look really, really big all of a sudden. Although I had to leave Mothman as an unknown in my first video, I have to admit I did lean heavily towards a large bird as the only logical explanation. But the question is, if it is a bird, what kind of a bird is it? Most theories focus on three birds that live in the area. The Sandhill Crane, the Barred Owl, and Turkey Vultures. The Sandhill Crane is a big bird, all right. It stands almost four feet and has a wingspan that can be as wide as seven feet. But it also has a very long neck, which would make it very hard to be mistaken for a human. Barred Owls are smaller than Sandhill Cranes and the least likely source of the Mothman mystery. Their wingspan rarely reaches 4 feet or 1.2 meters, and they stand less than 3 feet or under 1 meter. The turkey vulture is one of the best candidates for a Mothman source, but still only has a wingspan of 6 feet or 1.8 meters and stands less than 3 feet tall. You know, I can see how some kids out in the woods having some fun, maybe drinking or something, might mistake a large bird for a large humanoid monster. But what would explain all the other sightings of people who weren't partying or drinking? And keep in mind, these birds are all well known in the Mothman area and nothing that people would not recognize. If it was a bird, but it was still unknown in the area, it would have to be something very unusual and something very big. Something that just might fit the description of a very mysterious bird called Washington's Eagle.
Well, th this is a bird that John J. Audubon, who was one of the great ornithologists in history and who in the 1830s documented all the birds in North America. According to the history guy right here on YouTube, this eagle is different from any other eagle in America and it's huge. The body was three foot seven inches tall. It had a wingspan of 10 feet, two inches. Uh, and that was a male. And for uh, eagles, actually, with sexual dimorphism, the females are larger. So that would suggest that a female might have a wingspan somewhere on the order of, of 13 feet, which would be the largest wingspan on Earth. So it was a massive bird. It was clearly an eagle. It was all brown. And it was a sea eagle. He saw them nesting on the ground and catching fish. The bird was first reported by none other than John Audubon, America's most famous bird watcher back in 1830. Mr. Audubon even illustrated the bird in one of his most famous books. Okay, well, here's my question to you. I am actually working on a story about Mothman. Have you heard of Mothman? Yeah, I have, yeah, I'm in West Virginia, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, there there's a lot of, you know, mysterious facts surrounding Mothman. You know, some people think he's UFO, some people think it's a barn owl or something like that. Now, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards people were seeing a bird, but every bird I know of in that area, I think it's a little bit too small. But then I ran into your video about Washington's eagle, and I'm thinking, if there was a match between this bird and that geographical area of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, we might have something to look at here. So in your database, could this bird, if it ex really exists and still exists today, could be in the geographical area of Point Pleasant, West Virginia? I understand that no one's no one's actually seen a Washington eagle that's been documented since the 1830s. But it, I mean, it's a sea eagle. It was down river valleys. He first saw it in Mississippi. He collected his sample in Kentucky. So down the Ohio River Valley. I mean, it's it's conceivable that that would be at least the historical range of a Washington's eagle. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So that puts us within somewhere in range. I mean, it is possible. So I guess what we have to do is see if we can find one of these birds. So what, what do you suggest? I mean, are there specimens in a museum or are there people we could go to who could help us find one of these birds? I mean, ornithologists will tell you they don't exist because we don't have a specimen, but there are uh, stories of people who, who've seen them. Amateur ornithologists do see them in the wild. The last one I could find documented was in 2006. Uh, down in Tennessee and there are there's three museums in the United States who had supposedly a sample of Washington's eagle in their collection uh, even in Audubon's time it was an extremely rare bird so it would be something quite spectacular if we could find a sample of Washington's eagle well I mean that's all very interesting and you know if we could prove that this Washington's eagle actually exists in that area that just might turn this Mothman story on its head which I would be very interested in doing that would I mean if we, if we could both prove the existence of Washington's eagle and then prove that that was the Mothman that would answer two of history's enduring mysteries at once so so it would be it would be spectacular to me just to find a Washington's eagle and then if we found out that that was the Mothman that would be amazing yeah well, listen, why, why don't we do this? I don't know if you'd be up for it, but why don't we see if we could track down either a specimen in a museum of this Washington's Eagle or find a place where we could actually go to look for one. Would you be up for something like that? That's great. Shoot me an email and we'll figure out the next step. Okay, great. Well, listen, I got to run right now, but I really appreciate you coming on the channel today. I think we're on to something pretty exciting here. I agree. Okay, well, there you have it. I mean, some really interesting developments in the Mothman mystery. For right now, I'm gonna leave Mothman as an unknown, but I'll be back real soon with a new video updating you on our efforts to find a Washington's Eagle specimen and see if that is the source of the Mothman mystery. In the meantime, I urge you to take a look at History Guy's video about the Washington's Eagle. I'll be leaving a link for it down in the description box. So check it out, then let us know what you think in the comment section, either on the History Guy's channel or right here on Bill's channel. 
And hey, don't forget, we have a new show every Friday, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notifications bell so you get a shot at being first official comment and win the pin. If you have a picture and you're not quite sure whether it's real or not, send it in to me at billschannel at gmail.com and I'll take a look. Please don't leave links or suggestions in the comment section because really, the only thing that is going to do is turn me into a mega screamer screaming, you're driving me crazy! See you next time.